Thanks, Ed. Uh, Bob cheated, as he usually does. Uh, he was supposed to talk about the VA study, then Arnie was going to be here to talk about the Swedish study, and then I was going to discuss the two. That was the original plan. Arnie couldn't make it, and I can see why Bob didn't spend a lot of time on the VA study, because it was so poorly done, and it was so bad, so I can understand why he did what he did. Uh, I think meta-analyses are probably just as bad as the VA study. When you throw a bunch of garbage together, you usually come out with garbage. Uh, I do both hernias. I do a lot of opens. I did three uh, in one day last week. I do, I've do. i done over 3,000 laparoscopic. I think you need to do whatever repair you do best. And uh, as far as local and general anesthesia, Patty O'Dwyer did a nice study when he looked at the Lichtenstein repair and he looked at open and he looked at uh, open repair, Lichtenstein repair with general and local anesthesia. And the results were identical. The only difference between the two groups was the folks under, that had it under local said that they would not recommend it to a friend. So that was the only difference. Uh, George wants, may he rest in peace. George and I used to debate this many years ago, but this was in 1996, and Dr. Wants said, when correctly performed, preparate nail hernioplasty should prevent all hernias of the groin. What more do you want? What more do you want? Lloyd Niehus, this is his famous illustration from the fifth edition of his hernia book, the preperitoneal approach to the management of hernias of the groin is safe, allows anatomic definition of all hernia defects, and is followed by minimal morbidity. This was 1988. What more would you want from a hernia repair? Why do TEP, randomized prospective trials? Again, I'm just here to present the, sweet, uh, the uh, Swedish data, and I'm going to do that, but I had to get a few shots in it, Bob, because I knew he was going to do what he did. Um, TEP had less pain, as Bob told you, and early return and better cosmesis, and, and, and we know that. Another randomized prospective trial, TEP, Lichtenstein, less pain, shorter uh, re uh, return to re uh, recovery and return to work. Same thing that uh, Bob showed you. Very nice study between the TEP plug and the Lichtenstein. Again, TEP wins, TEP wins. And here's when we started seeing the open mesh repair with uh, the chronic pain problem, as Bob pointed out. This is a letter uh, when Arnie uh, told me that he couldn't come and uh, Bob and Ed asked me to come. Arnie wrote me this letter. And in the letter, it's interesting, in 1993, I was invited to the Karolinska Institute to show the TEP repair in 1993, so I went up and showed it. Arnie was in the audience, and I went up with uh, uh, Klaus Rudberg and Doug Arvidsson, and they based the Smeal trial that uh, Bob was just showing you on the technique uh, that I showed them. And so I kind of feel guilty when Bob shows the results, maybe had a higher recurrence rate, maybe it had something to do with my technique that I showed him, but... Uh, this is their trial, the Swedish multicenter trial of ingual hernia repaired by laparoscopy, and it was TEP versus Lichtenstein. The reason they came up with this trial, as Bob mentioned, in the mid-90s, uh, in, in Sweden, the shoulder dice repair was the most popular repair. They started looking at the Lichtenstein repair for their open repair, and about the same time, I had gone up in 93 to show them the TEP, so Arnie and the surgeon said, since these two mesh-based repairs are now becoming prominent, let's look and see the value of these new techniques, because to them, both were new techniques. Whoops, let's see if I can go back here. Most common procedure, these emerging technologies, can we prove that the regular guy, this is what they wanted to show, can we prove that the regular surgeon out in the community can do this operation as well as the experts? And that's what they were trying to show. They were, their primary endpoint was recurrence at five years. Short-term follow up to three months. They looked at chronic pain as a secondary endpoint and costs up to five years. That was another secondary endpoint. Method was TEP versus Lichtenstein, multi-center, 11 hospitals. There was an independent observer who did the clinical examination, the five-year follow-up. The surgery actually occurred between 1996 and 2001. TEP surgeons, here's the thing, TEP surgeons with 25 cases. Now, for those of you that do TEP surgery, you know at 25 cases you don't know what you're doing, okay? You may understand a little bit, but you don't know what you're doing. The VA trial that Bob talked about, if you look at the VA trial, in the meat of the VA trial, if you look at the surgeons with the 250 repairs, the recurrence rate was the same. They didn't put it in the abstract. They didn't put it in the discussion. They didn't put it anywhere. Hidden in the results, if you had an experienced surgeon, the results were the same. 
these were not, some of these were not experienced surgeons in this trial. 1,512 patients, pretty good. The TEP and the lictin seen pretty similar, uh, pretty similar uh, number. And if you look at the five-year follow-up, about a 95% follow-up, which is quite good, something you can't do here in America. Demographics were very similar between the two, two arms as far as the ASA grade occupation, all these other things, the, the age and the weight and all these things, very similar groups. When they looked at the operating time, they were the same. The TEP was 55 minutes, the Lichtenstein was 55 minutes. The interesting thing, if you look at the data, the time for the TEP decreased dramatically over the length of the study, telling you that you didn't have experienced surgeons at the beginning. Their time dr decreased dramatically as the, study, as the study went on. When you look at short-term post-operative pain, it's just what Bob told you. Day one through day 14, you can see it every day the laparoscopic group has less pain. And again, that's what you'd expect at day 14. Uh, it was still significant, significant at every day. Sick leave, they looked at the occupation based on light activity, what you have to do, moderate or heavy based on your occupation. And again, at each level, the TEP was better than the Lichtenstein with respect to sick leave. They looked at short time recovery and complications when the recovery, this is full recovery, the TEP was 20 days, Lichtenstein was 31, again, it's statistically significant. They had some conversions here for things that, uh, like tears in the peritoneum and things that people that know what they're doing don't have problems with. Recurrence rate, here's the deal, one, two, three, much higher, and the statistically significant higher in the TEP. It's 3.4%, uh, uh, 1.2%. When you take the outlier that uh, Bob mentioned, one surgeon in the TEP group had seven of the 21 recurrences. He was an outlier, statistically significant. You get rid of him, and the recurrence rate was the same. Get rid of him, and the recurrence rate was the same. Uh, when they looked at predictors of recurrence, as opposed to the VA study, the older, uh, uh, it, it was different. Here, the younger surgeons had a higher recurrence rate, and it was the opposite in the VA trial. And I might mention the VA trial. I don't think, Bob, you weren't actually, you, you weren't part of the trial, right, as far as your patients? No. Bob wasn't in the trial. At the VA in Memphis, where we were, uh, I was on staff, and I watched the staff guys that did the, the TEPs and things, and uh, oftentimes the staff was not scrubbed. Sometimes they were not in the room. The follow-up was in less than optimal, and they were doing a very good job. So it's not as good as, uh, as you might be uh, led to believe sometimes. When they looked at chronic pain, chronic pain, they looked at light pain, which was occasional discomfort, didn't interfere with your daily activities, moderate pain, which was occasionally, and severe pain, which really altered your lifestyle. And again, as Bob mentioned, this was an afterthought because once recurrences, once they saw a recurrence rate wasn't that significantly different, they added pain. So they didn't have a good assessment of pain other than a visual analog scale. And as you can see here, one, two, three, five years, statistically significant with respect to total chronic pain. This is total chronic pain. Okay, very, very similar uh, results all the way down, much better in the TEP at five years than at each year. When you look at severe chronic pain, these are the ones that are, you can't do anything, totally disabled. One year, statistically, two, three, and five. But what you see is, as the years go by, the Lichtenstein repair with severe debilitating pain, they get better where it's not statistically significantly different. So it takes some of the Lichtenstein folks that, that have significant, severe pain. You may give them five years before they get better. Economy and euros, they looked at all the different things, capital costs, all the other things that you have to look at. When the total cost, including the cost to the community, was looked at, like Bob said, it was 219 euros. Now, this was with a, not with a bunch of disposable equipment, and they felt if they used reusable, it would be similar. So Arnie concluded advantages with TEP, less post-op pain, Shorter sick leave, shorter convalescence, less chronic pain. I think we can say that's for sure. Disadvantages, increased risk for recurrence, especially true in, in uh, inexperienced hands. These complications, three of the four were due to peritoneal tears, which it's easy to handle those. You just have to get the gas out of the peritoneal cavity. And it was more costly by 290 euros. Arnie felt that you need to improve the education for the surgeon. Use more reusable equipment and use it for these other indications. 
I think evidence-based medicine is showing these things, that TEP has less immediate pain, has less chronic pain, and expert surgeons have just as good results as with the open repair. As Renee Stopa said, it's not possible these days to ignore the extraordinary possibilities offered by peritoneal prosthesis in groin hernia repair. And as Bob Condon said, the high rate of recurrent groin hernias is caused by failure of surgeons to learn a method from those skilled in his application. If you want to do it right, learn to do it from someone who is doing it right. Thank you. Our next two presenters are going to discuss, because you're all confused, well, when should you use one or the other, or when should you do nothing? Dr. Tofig is going to first present, and we'll see what uh, Dr. Ramshaw has to say about what she says. <laughs> 